Unearthing the secrets of fossils under rock and stone. A job for a man, isn't it? Mary Anning followed her passion of being a paleontologist and she ignored the gender barriers of the 1800s. Mary Anning's archaeological discoveries held her legacy, but because of her gender and social class, it was hard for her to be accepted into the scientific community. Acquiring a love for fossils from her father, Mary Anning was an early British fossil collector and paleontologist. She was born in 1799 in Lyme Regis, which is a coastal town in England. The cliffs in Lyme Regis were rich with fossils from the seas of the Jurassic period. Mary Anning helped discover the first specimen of ichthyosaur, which was most likely discovered around 1809 to 1811 when she was only 10 to 12 years old. Mary Anning discovered the first plesiosaur, which could have been her most important discovery. I think the big thing is that she's known for finding the, the first um, plesiosaur skeleton and uh, describing it effectively. Uh, and that was a huge thing. Not only was she a single woman in, um, that, you know, in the Victorian era of, of Europe, that it was a big deal. Back then, paleontology was more of a hobby than it was science. People didn't believe that an animal could become extinct. That was only a theory. People thought fossils were just remains of existing animals. Women in the 1800s had a very tough life. In the 1800s, women were second-class citizens. They were expected to keep their interests in home and family. Women were not encouraged to have a real education, and they weren't encouraged to pursue a real career. They were also denied the right to vote. According to Rights for Women, prior to 1776, women exercised the right to vote in several American colonies. After 1776, states rewrote their constitutions to prevent women from voting. After 1787, women were able to vote only in New Jersey. Women continued to vote in New Jersey until 1807, when male legislators officially outlawed women's suffrage. After a woman got married, they couldn't have their own property, keep their own wages, or sign contracts. Dinosaurs, birds, and rodents. Crumbling land masses and inland seas. Sea monsters, sharks, and blood red plankton. Forests of ferns, cycads, and conifers. Warm, moist, tropical breezes. This was the Jurassic. The climate was humid and had a wet subtropical feel. The dry deserts took on a greener color. The palm-like cycads were plentiful. Cycads were tropical palm-like plants. At the top of the food chain were plesiosaurs, sharks, and rays. Plesiosaurs were predatory marine reptiles that lived in the late Jurassic. This long-necked animal had a streamlined, tapered body. Its long and flexible neck allowed quick changes of direction. It could turn almost on the spot. A plesiosaur has four paddle-like flippers and swallows its prey whole. Another one of Mary's finds, the ichthyosaur meaning fish lizard in Latin, first appeared about 250 million years ago in the late Jurassic. Ichthyosaurs became extinct in the late Cretaceous period. These distant relatives of lizards and snakes were the most highly specialized aquatic reptiles, but ichthyosaurs were not dinosaurs. In conclusion, Mary Anning's archaeological finds held her legacy. She was a woman doing a man's job. She fought the gender barrier at that time, following in her father's footsteps. She followed her heart, and even though she is an unsung hero, her legacy still affects the scientific community today. Her archaeological finds were new and exciting, but because of her gender and social class, she was rarely given credit. This affects the fact that even though she made all these great discoveries, some of them were credited to men. I think her leadership was in many ways is shown in her tenacity um, for standing up for what she thought. The fact that she ignored the gender barrier to follow her heart shows her leadership, and her archaeological finds hold her legacy. Oh, Mary Ann. All day, all night, Mary Ann. Oh, yeah. Down by the seaside, shifted sand. Even little children love Mary Ann. Down by the seaside.